Hello and welcome back to Curbstomp City. Today we will be looking at the announcement of TW 2016. But first, before we do that, I'm just going to address something with the series that I have going at the minute, which is Curbstomp City on TW 2013. Um, basically, I'm going to stop that series for now and resume it once this game comes out. And then we can go way into the future um, over the next however long. And play it on there rather than stopping it when 2016 comes out we may as well just wait and then begin since it is a local to global series as well i'm not going to get to global within the time so there's no point really of continuing and we're not that far in we're only we're less than 20 shows in so yeah that's just something i'm gonna announce today um other than that we're gonna get straight into the tw 2016 information this all comes from the gray dog software official forums the official developers of the game adam ryland is a developer for the game as you can see as this title on the forum and um, we're going to begin with the frequently asked questions about the game and then we're going to get to the developer's journal, which has some more information on. So the first question is, that, is this an entirely new game? And Adam goes on to say, no, it's built off 2013, basically. And when it comes out is the second quarter of 2016. So that's going to be any time between April and June. How much will it cost? It's going to be $35, which is 25 British pounds. If you're not in either of them currencies, just Google it and it'll come up. What new features are going to be in? The popular developers journal, which is what we're going to look at in a second, will start in February. So we're, we're into the first week and a day of that. Every weekday, there's something announced. And we're on the Monday at the minute after last week where we had five announcements or five days of announcements. As a guide, there are close to 500 additions and modifications from 2013. It then goes on to state that only hand-selected people can test the game. And if you request to be a tester, you'll be automatically disqualified. Um, so if you do want to test the game, I wouldn't post about it. If you do, But if you do want to test future games, I'd just sign up for the forum and just sort of get your face known. And then you might be asked in the future, but yeah, that's that's just one of those things. Then will the Cornell un the Cornell verse be updated, which he confirms it will be updated up until January 2016. Of course, the Cornell verse is the default database that you get with the game, where it's got fictional characters, fictional companies. It's not something I ever use, but if that's something you use, then it's a good thing to know. There's going to be a demo, which will allow people, usually I think it's a week or a month, I can't really remember, it's a long time since 2013, I can't remember how long the demo was, it doesn't say here. I'm a mod maker, will my database be compatible? As usual, there's a converter that will make 2013 databases work in 2016. Although we just say that there's going to be some extra information that will be needed to be need to be added, which we can get into later in the developer's journal. Then it's can I continue my 2013 save in 2016? And he says no, which is also the reason I'm cancelling the series for now. I might do a short term Road to WrestleMania series, um, but yeah, that's something I'm going to think about from Rumble to Mania. Just as my last game, sort of, on 2013. Is it too late to make suggestions? And yes, because the coding phase has already started. And I have posted in the suggestions forum, did you see it? Unless you, unless he's blocked you, then he would have seen all this, all your suggestions in the forums. And he's read every single thread in that forum. And wrote down all the ones he likes, basically, and added them in. So yeah, again, if you want to make suggestions for the game, maybe for the updates, 
um, then do sign up for the website and you can get your your voice heard basically then on to the developers journal so far we have six days worth of information so we start with alliance titles which will be a new, completely new feature in the game where instead of just all the belts being held to a company they will be now you can now have titles owned by an alliance for example the nwa where they used to have or maybe they still do have a title that was used across all of the territories um, and challenged by the main eventers of each company so this is an example rick flair would have gone to different territories around the us maybe even europe to defend the title against their each territory's top guy so that's a nice addition then you can use the alliance title as long as no other company is using it and you have to re request permission from the alliance to be able to use the title so you're basically effectively borrowing the title from the alliance and then as and you automatically get the champion on a one night loan so you say say your tna and wwe are in your alliance and john cena is the champion of the alliance and you were tna you would request the alliance to use the title and then you'd get john cena for a night basically it's also, it also states there are both pros and cons to having your employees win the Alliance title. On the plus side, those workers will improve faster and gain more popularity because they are working more dates than usual for a variety of companies in a variety of locations. The downside are that, they, that the increased schedule means that you have the potential to get fatigued, the injury risk is increased, and the increased exposure can mean they naturally become targets for bigger promotions. Or companies as it says alliance titles and their histories can be viewed at any point via the alliance screen the alliance also has the ability to vacate titles if the champions and end up being unable to defend the title for example if they were written if they were signed to a written deal with a company not in the alliance next up we have contract offer templates so all this is basically is say you have a specific pay that you want to pay jobbers you'll set up a template called jobber then you'll have the ways that you want to pay a jobber so 200 300 dollars then you set a downside and any other information that usually goes into a contract and then you can just save that contract rather than having to just negotiate all the time then you can say right if you're a top guy you're going to be on this money if you're a mid card you're going to be on this money so yeah that's quite a nice little addition it does save a little bit of time and there's no limits to how many templates you can construct from the 5th of february we have home bases and travel costs and a moving house so now all move it all workers have a home base, which is the region in which they currently live. This can either be set as a specific region via the editor or simply given as an area in which case the AI will pick an appropriate region for when the game begins. So you could have someone that would live in the north of England and then they move somewhere else to the south of England. A worker's current location has several uses. One such use is that it allows travel costs to be calculated, meaning that small companies now have more incentive to hire workers local to them to cut costs. A worker's home base can change over time. This can both be temporary, for example, if a foreign worker joins a touring company, he may choose to stay in that country for the duration of the tour or long term. 
If a worker chooses to move house, the game will also recognise this as being a big move and his or her romantic partner may go too. Which is, I think this is a good tradition. It would encourage, yeah, as it says, to use local workers if you can't really afford to pay. So yeah, I think, this, I like that addition, it's good. Okay, so then we go on to new picture formats and automatic custom backgrounds. This is, this is all um, cosmetic additions, really. Um, so as, as well as JPG format, images within the game can now be BMP and GIF. And PNG it states that is not supported. So, so the logos that you use for the companies and the worker pictures and all that that you can download, basically you can be in two more formats. It's not really a big deal, but it's worth noting, I guess. The game also supports custom backgrounds now. So if you have a transparent GIF, which is basically, we'll use an example here on the side, you see Bram has been cut around and you can see the red background behind him. If you ha didn't have the red background there, he would it would be a transparent background. And you can save transparency within a GIF file. And then the game will automatically add a background, which would be useful because say you're midway through a game and you wanted to change the background you could rather than going through every individual picture you could just have a series of images without a background and then behind that could be the game's background that it wants you to have which I think is a good idea I like that I've always tried to add a PNG in for the same reason but it never works which obviously it's still it's not going to work, but it's a good job we get gifts now, which has the same cap the transparency capabilities. So next we have Alliance created by the AI, uh, which is new to the game this year, is the ability for AI companies to band together to form a new alliance. Previously, alliances could only be formed if the player chose to create one, and if they were preset in the database already. New alliances are determined by company size, the personalities of the owners, their locations, and whether it is mutually beneficial. Next up, we have Wrestler's Court, which is a famous thing from, I think, the Attitude Era, where if someone did something wrong in the backstage locker room, they would get together. Like there was like, I think the Undertaker was the judge, JBL was in the jury. <laughs> something like that, I know they're both involved, where they would be prosecuted, the co and where, where the offender would be prosecuted by the wrestlers and set a sentence. So, essentially, a self-policing a self-policing method, a locker room leader acts as a judge and can sentence workers who commit minor offences to punishments. This helps improve the personalities of some workers. The user has no say in wrestler's court. It's something handled independently by the boys, but just adds more realism. A massive amount of time has been spent making the background, the backstage environment more alive and making the user's handling of the locker room a key element in the gameplay. Wrestler's court is the first of many features that will be revealed over the coming months that play into this emphasis, which is good to hear I like that sounds positive for the future next we have organic biographies TW 2016 will be the first game in the series to feature the option of organic biographies for workers every worker either has the option of having organic biographies enabled or staying with the traditional pre-written version if organic biography is enabled that worker will have his biography automatically created by the AI when the game begins and it will be updated whenever something noteworthy happens. The setting can be changed on a worker by worker basis whenever the user wants. It can also be set via the options menu so that newly generated workers will be set appropriately. 
Um, the biography is obviously just the written paragraph next to the wrestler's name when you click on their profile. An example of this sort of thing can be seen in the game Football Manager, where you can see on the side this player, Dario Vidosic. I'm not really sure who he is, but um, you'll see that it's created a little profile for him where it details well, where he's from. It's having made his Australia debut against Japan in June 2009. Blah, blah, blah. And this is all automatically generated. And it go, it also updates as you go through the game. So say he joined a different team in 2016. You can't see it on this screen, but it would say in June, in June 2016, blah, 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 he moved to wherever. He made this many appearances for this club. And going along with the appearances made within the game and it updates automatically. So it's good to see this sort of thing has now been added to TEW. Topics that are reference include the workers basic details, employment both past and present, tag teams, titles held, positions of power held, important relationships, honours and outside interests such as if they are regularly in, in movies. Organic bios work for all workers, whether they're active wrestlers or not. So it works for staff, road agents, referees, everything else. So I really like that edition, it's really good. And from today, we have in tag teams and click incidents. So in previous games, backstage inc incidents were limited to one person with an optional target. So it would be just um Bram upsets Willow Spray backstage. This year it can be ex expanded to tag teams and clicks, so large groups of friends. So now we could get Bram and Sammy Callahan upset Ricochet and no one no one da backstage or the entire zealots up, upset Nixon Newell and embarrassed her or whatever backstage and this adds to the realism of the game, especially as it plays into backstage relationships more. But you can also add it can also add an extra wrinkle to the user's handling of the locker room, as he must punish all the offenders equally. This can make for some interesting scenarios, particularly if one major bad influence is dragging his click buddies into trouble that they otherwise probably wouldn't be involved in. Which is cool, so you can get bad influences getting people involved in things they shouldn't be. And hopefully on the flip side, we get, we get the opposite where someone can take them out of that sort of situation. Um, but we'll have to see about that. There are also new tag teams and click incidents that are specifically written to, in, to revolve around them using their numbers advantage to back, in backstage. So again, big groups can pick on one person if they wanted. So yeah, that's everything for now though. If you do want to keep updated, I'm not going to release videos daily, but I will be probably weekly, every Monday, like I have been with the videos, apart from I missed last Monday because, well, the announcement of the game, and I just didn't want to play it anymore since the new one's coming out. But if you do want to check daily on the developer's journal, you can find it on greydogsoftware.com slash forum, then you need to go to you'll be led to this page then you need to just scroll down in the first section you'll see total extreme wrestling 2013 general discussion yes it's 2013 forum but you'll see the developers journal at the top for 2016. there's also a huge thread that you can talk about the game if you want to and yes i'd recommend signing up anyway if you are a fan of the series but for now that is everything from this video Join me next week where I'll be bringing you the updated developer's journal and everything else that's new in the game and I'll talk about what I think about it. And until then, subscribe for more, like the video if you're looking forward to TW 2016. And until next time, peace.